World War II brought to the quiet, almost uninhabited Holmes Glen, one of the largest munition plants built in Victoria. And what might have become a white elephant in peacetime has long since been converted into one of the state's busiest and most useful factories. For here we have a modern and in fact quite revolutionary concrete project producing prefabricated units soon to become attractive, comfortable homes. Hundreds are employed here at the Holmes Glen factory where the work is interesting and of course extremely important to the general welfare of the community. Each day brings a further stream of raw materials, the vital ingredients for the tons and tons of concrete being continuously mixed. Aggregate, sand and cement. An average of 75 tons of different sized aggregate and 75 tons of sand are delivered daily. These materials are quickly elevated to the mixing tower. Special bin type trucks bring the bulk cement which has to be shot into the mixing tower by compressed air. Expert hands control the levers which direct the right weight of each ingredient into the giant mixer. Apart from the aggregate, sand, cement and of course water, calcium chloride is added to give high early strength. Frequently, air in trainer is added to the mixture as well. This is a specially developed chemical, which increases the workability of the concrete, making it, as they say in the trade, more plastic. A far cry from the small builder's cement mixing machine, this four cubic yard capacity mixer works continuously throughout the day, filling the skip over and over again with ton upon ton of top grade concrete that will soon become the floor, the wall or the ceiling of someone's home. Into the skip, and away to the heart of the factory. This is the assembly section of the vast plant, and here we shall see our whole wall of a home can be made quickly and simply by the latest developments in prefabrication. Where weeks of work would be spent with bricks, trowel and mortar, just a few hours of skillfully applied modern engineering and architecture, and we have an even stronger wall at a much lower cost. But not just one wall, dozens of walls at a time flow from the assembly line here at Holmes Glen, keeping up with an ever-increasing demand for homes as new sites are opened up and old ones cleared of their obsolete buildings. On a constantly moving assembly line, every wall is prepared according to drawings and specifications. First, the top, bottom and end plates are put on. The door and window openings are carefully placed into position, then the wire reinforcements. Wooden plugs are placed to provide openings for pipings, electrical fittings, and to allow the nailing of wooden fixtures. And now the table moves onto the concrete pourer, where it's placed on a special vibrating carriage. The loaded skip, coming from the concrete mixer, pours the concrete into the mechanical hopper. Slowly, the vibrating carriage moves under the hopper, ready for the pouring of the concrete. And under the instructions of the foreman, the amount of concrete is carefully controlled. The right quantity exactly will pour into each frame. Close teamwork is essential on a job of this nature, for much of the material would be wasted in the pouring without the cooperation and resulting coordination that you now see being exercised. Of course, it's very important that the concrete be made to completely settle in. Under electrical power, the heavy table vibrates to ensure the even distribution of the mixture.
This is the mechanical screeder which gives a straight smooth surface to the concrete. Finishing plasterers and carpenters set to work cleaning the door and window frames and checking the position of the various plugs. Since the window and door frames are cast in with the walls, there can be no gaps. And so when the house is fully constructed, no drafts. The completed wall has many outstanding features. Both exterior and interior are treated with PVA paint and excellent long-lasting results are obtained. There'll be no danger of cracking, for instance. Yes, future maintenance on the houses prefabricated at Holmes Glen will be very small indeed, a big factor to be considered by tenants who are contemplating purchasing their own home. These heavy rubber flaps give a final smooth finish before the jacking truck carries the table to the drying pedestal, where they'll remain overnight. It is, of course, very necessary for the correct drying time to be adhered to before the next operation takes place. Scores of tables at a time take their place on the drying stacks waiting for delivery. There is no need to be an expert to realize the economy that the prefabrication process has brought to the building industry. While the tables are curing, let us see how chimneys are prefabricated. The steel frame indicates the typical style of the family home chimney. And now three pipe moulds that not only provide the flue but save a considerable amount of concrete and unnecessary waste. The fireplace mould and the wire mesh top complete the reinforced frame. Again, by means of the overhead crane, concrete is poured from the hopper into the frame. By means of the pencil vibrator, the concrete is evenly spread to every corner of the mould. Next comes the hand screeder, which efficiently smooths the surface before skilled hands put the finishing touches. Twenty-four hours later, the walls of the formwork are removed and the pipe moulds pulled out. Again, we can quickly appreciate what a tremendous saving in material and manpower is achieved by the mass production of the chimney. It is now just a matter of the chimney piece being bolted into place. As a matter of fact, the erection of one of these chimneys is calculated to just five man hours. In the making of the floor and ceiling slabs, the forms are prepared just like the table unit, only not on a moving assembly line. Working teams move quickly from unit to unit in preparation for the pouring of the concrete from the hand-operated hopper. The electric screeding process precedes the finishing, which is done by hand. Though mass produced, the finish obtained in all sections of the Holmes Glen plant ensures nothing but the finest in comfortable, modern homes. Even the steps, mainly used in blocks of flats, are prefabricated and delivered to the buildings in complete units. Again, many hours of tedious construction on the job are reduced to the simple process of bolting the unit into place. Returning to the factory once more, we view the tile making. A mixture best suited to the tiling is pressed from the extruder into moulds. After cutting to size, the tiles are sent on the conveyor to the spray painting machine to receive an attractive variety of typical roof colours. After 24 hours, the tiles are ready and can be moved from the conveyor and stacked on pallets. The idea behind the stacking of the tiles onto pallets is, of course, to save handling. At every point, the streamlining of operations is sought in a constant endeavour to provide more and more homes of the highest possible standard at the most reasonable price possible. Now a forklift picks up the pallets, taking them off to the stacks. And again the forklift comes into operation, loading the now dried tiles on the truck, ready for delivery to the field. At the field, the tile elevator takes over the job. There are no neck-breaking climbs up ladders with heavy tiles here. 
Only two men are needed to feed the elevator, sending up countless tiles to the tiling team at the top. We're now seeing the latest process used for making pre-stressed concrete fence posts. The aim is for a high strength and more flexible concrete for long posts. The high tensile wire is fixed firmly to one end of the frame while the other is fixed to a stressing bar. This idea for producing flexible concrete posts originated in France and is now used extensively throughout the world. The layman finds quite fascinating the thought of flexibility being applied to concrete posts. Yes, that is exactly the result produced by this ingenious method of reinforcing with taut high tensile wire. A very interesting stage is the attaching of the hydraulic jack to the stress bar and the process of placing a stress of 5,000 pounds on each wire. And now ready for pouring. This is a special dry mix concrete. All the latest discovery is being used to produce the strongest concrete possible. And again the vibrator moves into action. The drying process is quite different in this case. The forms containing the posts are placed in a curing chamber and after the chamber is closed and sealed, a continuous supply of steam from a boiler is pumped in overnight. This gives the concrete a high early strength. In the morning, the posts are removed, the wires cut by acetylene torches. The dividing plates come away quite easily, and now the posts are ready to be stacked. Again, the torch removes the protruding end of the pre-stressed wires. By this method, many stout stumps, fencing posts, vertical and horizontal beams are made to meet the demands of modern architecture. Pre-stressed concrete never rots in the soil, of course. It resists the hard punishments of everyday use. It's tough and flexible, and so has become an essential part of the building industry in these times of great development. In a similar way, larger beams of great strength can be produced. Pillars, electric light posts and telegraph poles are seen at their strongest built in this fashion. The CS and IRO's Hyatt laboratories provide the necessary scientific research and continuous checkups required to keep the Housing Commission's activities up to date and enable them to match the ever-increasing demand of modern living. There is always a great emphasis on safety all pre-stressed posts are checked in every respect. In this braking test, the bar bends slowly under the tremendous pressure. Six thousand pounds pressure and the bar still resists. A reading of the bending pressure is taken and noted. Pressure is increased still further till we reach 14,000 pounds. Not until this great pressure does the bar cease to resist. The test has been a successful one, for the pressure of 14,000 pounds is a long, long way above normal. The CS and IRO is ever at work finding better and less expensive ways of promoting modern development. In this kiln, a revolutionary idea has proved fruitful producing a new lightweight concrete. A particular type of shale is burnt in this kiln and by using a new and revolutionary method for dealing with high temperatures, a new material has been born, which replaces the ordinary aggregate and in fact betters it in many ways. This new material has a hard, vitreous surface, 
The interior is cellular in structure and is so light that it floats on water. One doesn't need much imagination to appreciate the great advantages of this new material. 40% lighter, there's tremendous savings in cartage, labour and material in construction. On top of all this, we have the added advantage of sound and heat insulation characteristics. Regardless of this remarkable lightweight property, mixed with concrete, the material shows all the strength and carries all the advantages of the ordinary concrete, as, as this breaking test proves. The experiments are so promising that the Housing Commission has expanded the lightweight pre-stress method to the construction of roof and flooring units. Here are the results. The superior house, the very latest in modern concrete house development. Note the contemporary design of this delightful home. Flat roofing, for instance. This type of roofing would not be possible without the development of the lightweight, pre-stressed concrete. As well as being practical, modern engineering developments have added much attractiveness, perhaps even beauty, to our latest building. The new style copper flue over the fireplace, as well as adding its contemporary touch, is a very practical innovation. The heat from the fire, instead of going up the chimney, is radiated by the copper flue around the room. Picture windows are of course all the rage now in modern homes. In the case of the smaller windows, aluminium subframes are fitted in the lightweight concrete walls. Then the aluminium window frames glazed and with double hung sashes are fitted to the subframe on the site. And here are the doors already fitted with locks and machined to fit perfectly onto the pressed steel door jams which have been cast into the concrete walls. The latest cork flooring covering gives another fresh contemporary touch while being very practical. And then there's the parquet floor covering. The canine ceiling tiles, which provide the right atmosphere acoustically, as well as being attractive. For easy cleaning in the kitchen and dining room, vinyl floor tiles are ideal. And now it's the painter's turn. All the latest contemporary colours, of course. Some of the essential fittings move swiftly into place. Every housewife appreciates roomy cupboards, and you wouldn't find any better than these. Let's take a quick look at the laundry. Now the kitchen and dining room. The lounge and dining room. And the bedrooms. There are three bedrooms, a double bedroom and two singles. Though of course the single bedrooms are quite large enough for two if necessary. The Australian building industry is certainly up with the times in styling and, of course, prefabrication means a very reasonable price. Although the finished houses will be considered as concrete homes, there is a large amount of timber acquired. The Housing Commission's factory is well prepared and fully stocked to meet the constant call for first-grade timber. Here, a variety of jobs are taken care of. Firstly, the factory's own production needs have to be supplied. Secondly, it has to provide the pre-cut timber roof and floor groups for houses in the field. A series of woodworking machines saw, drill, plane and groove the different timbers according to specification. The pre-cut items are selected and solidly wired in suitable packs. As the overhead crane arrives, each pack is properly marked for a specific destination. 
This is the easy way to load a truck, and it's only a few minutes before each pack is on its way to the field. We've come now to the door section, a very important part of the Holmesglen plant, as you can well imagine. For quite a variety of doors have to be processed here. All locks and hinges are fitted, so that on arrival at the site, they are merely slipped into position. The door jams will have already been cast in the lightweight concrete walls. Another important section of the prefabrication is the making of the roofing trusses. In the carpentry shop, the timber is first cut to size, grooved, and the ends cut to the required angle. The pre-cut elements are now assembled on a jig. Note how simple it is using grip plates to join the pieces together without risk of cracking or splitting the wood. Next, the prefabricated trusses are lifted to the roof and fitted into place, again with the use of grip plates. Finally, the battens are nailed and the roof is now ready for tiling. There are no buildings without plumbing, but plumbing on the job can be quite a slow process. The Housing Commission has introduced prefabrication into this difficult field too. Considerable time and labour can be saved if the different items are pre-cut in the factory by modern machinery. In this way, all slow, strenuous handwork on the field is eliminated. Once assembled, it's just a matter of stocking each plumbing unit until the time of delivery. All the paints are carefully tested according to the Commonwealth Paint Committee's official specifications. First, the volatile parts are evaporated in the oven, and then the sample is put through the non-volatile test to ensure complete drying. The scratching test shows the paint's resistance to physical punishment. A very important test is the fund test for determining the coverage of paint per gallon. The most important newcomer to the paint field is the polyvinyl acetate paint, which is an excellent medium for concrete surface coatings. Now the salt residue test, or the water resistance test, an important test in connection with the rain resistance of the tiles. Having seen much of the factory prefabrication, let us now follow the various units as they are taken away to the field for assembly. Extremely powerful overhead cranes are needed to take the great bulk of these various units, perhaps a whole house in two or three loads. So too is it necessary to have specially constructed trailers, trailers able to carry a load which is both bulky and heavy. This is no job for the Sunday car driver. A tremendous responsibility is placed on the drivers of these great floats. Fourteen of them are constantly on the road, each carrying seven or eight walls. Such activity speaks for itself. The concrete housing project is here to stay. All this activity needs precise planning and thorough coordination. The transport officer controls the road movements through an intercommunications radio system. He is in constant radio contact with the various field cranes and with the floats on the road. He can check every minute to see if the road movements flow according to schedule. If any new demands come from the fields, he can give instructions immediately. The floats have now arrived at the field and were able to follow the building process itself. A half set of concrete stumps are set in the ground to exact levels and positions to provide a base for the erection of the concrete walls. And now the moment when we see the whole wall of the house being placed into position. Like a small building block in the hand of a child, the field crane easily manoeuvres the wall into place. Thank you. 
As each concrete wall sits on two concrete stumps, the wall section becomes a concrete truss. Bolting these walls together provides a house that is almost indestructible. Of course, the joints between walls have to be sealed against air and moisture before the finishing touches are made to the wall surface. The prefabricated roof and flooring timbers are now put into place. While this is still a job that takes time, the reduction in man hours due to the prefabrication is very great indeed. The automatic tile lift we saw earlier again takes its place, saving time and a great deal of labor as well. The flooring is laid. Windows are put into place. These windows are of the latest design, aluminum double hung type and have low maintenance and no painting. We come to the plumbing, and here again the man hours have been greatly reduced by prefabrication. The kitchen is equipped with a very modern and complete set of cupboards with lots of drawers. For the housewife who dreams of a kitchen of her own, designed to assist with efficient housekeeping, this is it. Plenty of room to move about and really well designed. The bathroom is very up to date, as you can see. And the gas fireplace has been carefully selected in accordance with the size of the room. The use of modern colors brings further smartness to the already very attractive home. Both outside and inside is painted by experts using the top grade paints that we saw passing such rigid tests earlier. a fence that will last a lifetime, and now the finishing touches as the concrete paths are laid. A housing problem happily resolved. 37,500 housing units have been completed and made available for occupation by the Victorian Housing Commission. We have travelled a long way to show you the intricate work of the concrete house project. The result has been 1,400 family units built in the past year. We have pointed out how the careful planning and efficient organisation have made it possible to keep up with the ever-increasing demand, securing a higher standard of living for thousands of families within reasonable economical limits. But the Housing Commission keeps a watch on the artistic side of this programme too. The Housing Commission builds a wide range of houses, from the small, low-rent units for elderly people, to the 10-square family homes, to the multi-storey flats. The architects of the Commission provided for various types of homes, trying to adapt them to the surrounding natural scenery, with a balanced variety, to satisfy the individual demand, and to avoid the monotony within each scheme. The Housing Commission never stops looking for new ideas, Research is conducted in the modern manner. They look ahead to increased population, perhaps in a decade, many millions. The work is going on, and the name Holmes Glen will echo in the memories of many thousands of happy families.